Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to Viewers Anonymous. What's going on? I'm Scooch Bronson. And I'm S. Foster. That's right, man. And you're listening to the Viewers Anonymous podcast, man. Welcome back. What's going on with you, bro? Man, shit, man. I, I was just uh I was just watching um finally got the chance to watch that Greyhound. Well, I'm not finished with it. I got like 15 minutes left. Um, but we had a set time so I can get back to that shit, man. I mean, it's cool, man. You know, I wanted to give it a watch because it got um, you know, Tom Hanks in it. And, uh, mm-hmm. But it gives me a vibe of, have you ever seen Crimson Tide? Mm-hmm. Denzel Washington, Gene Hackman. Like, it gives me... No, I, I know Gene Hackman is in it, but I don't remember watching it. It's a, yeah. it's like an older movie, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like in yeah. the 90s. 90s. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a good it was a good joint, man. Uh, it gives me a little bit of those type of vibes, only because it's, uh, you know, out in the ocean. Like, it's not really, like, everything is on the ship. But in that case, they was in the submarine. And, like, mm-hmm. it was more, like, because in that movie, Denzel Washington and Gene Hatman, like, they was pretty much going at it. Like, they was neck to neck pretty much the whole yeah. film. So it's a, it's different kind of films that just give you that vibe because it's ship-type shit. You know what I mean? It's not really no else. Mm-hmm. So it's just giving me that type of vibes, man. But I will say this, though. Like, I know we got... Uh, actor, I don't even know if we said it on this podcast. Have we said that we was gonna do like a, a actor slash either director type of uh, appreciation? I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't think we announced it yet. Yeah, like that's uh one thing that we're gonna. Uh, well, it's the next month now, so we're gonna do it at some point of, of this yeah. month. We got an actor in mind, but Tom Hanks is the actor we're gonna have to do, man, at some point. Oh, that's facts. That's facts because that's a he. He has a um. Man, <clears throat> he has a wide, wide range of, of roles that he's played, man. And like he can he can kind of do it all. Yeah, man. He's 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 definitely one man. He Tom Hanks, man, he he really a, a whole full legend. Like Oh yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, he he is a legend out here, man. But um but yeah, man, that's all I was up to, man. I was just uh watching that Greyhound, man. What you what you been up to, man? Man, uh, I went to uh, Cincinnati this weekend to go kick it with uh, my little cousins. We watched um, the Ohio State football game. You know what I'm saying? Went to go talk some trash and enjoy ourselves this weekend. And um, that's pretty much about it, man. Listen to some of their new music that they had coming out and all that stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? It was a pretty chill weekend, man. Oh, that's what's up, man. Yeah, I've been seeing – I've been uh... – you know, because I followed them as well, man, and I was uh, watching the video. I, I was looking for you, man. I didn't see you in the clip video that I had put up. Because I know you said oh, that no, you... I, ain't, I ain't going to be in no videos no time soon. I'm just in one of the songs. Oh, I got okay. a uh, song that's coming out. I, I'm probably going to be in no videos, man. I, I don't know about that one. <laughs> 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 hey, it's going to be hard to buy you in it, because all y'all look like, well, I, ain't, I ain't even going to hold that 100%. <laughs> it was a. Uh, uh, it's funny that you said that though, because um, when we went to we went to Hooters last night, and uh, when I was at we was at Hooters, the, we was talking and shit, and the lady had seen us. She seen me and the, uh, my my little cousin that looked just like me. So uh, she kept staring at us, and she was like, um, "Hmm." So you know what I'm saying? She seen it, and she kept looking and looking. So I had got up and went to the bathroom, and she came back and asked my little cousin, "Was I his dad?" <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, she thought I was his dad. Well, because you know what I'm saying. When we first came in, you, you couldn't, you can't see our faces, but she, you, you know what I'm saying. They could tell I was the oldest one because it was me, my little sister, and them two. So they could tell I was the oldest one out of the group. And um, <clears throat> we got to sitting down and everything, and so she was, you know, she was talking and everything, and she was like. Um, she looked for me. She's like, yeah, she started talking to me. She's like, yeah, I asked him if he was his dad. And I was laughing. I was like, yeah, that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
like, yeah, that's my son. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? That's my oldest boy. So, you know what I'm saying? We had a good little time, man. But it was funny because she kept looking like, man, these motherfuckers look just like. But I was like, nah, that's my little cousin. So, anytime motherfuckers see us, though, they say that exact thing. Like, boy, these motherfuckers look dead on each other. Boy, that is too funny, boy. I, I was I was expecting <clears throat> twin shit or something, but that, yo, I know he's <laughs> that one. Yeah, he be, you know what I'm saying, we don't, we don't do shit but grill each other all day, so I got him on that one. That is too funny, boy. Too funny. <laughs> but we got was... a good one this week, man. We got a real good one, bro. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir, man. We, we doing our first comedy. Um mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been thinking about this shit all week because I was like, I wonder, like, should we do this, like, a different kind of format or because, like, it's, there's so many, like, scenes in it that's like, yeah. I mean, it goes along with the plot, but some of the shit ain't really got nothing to do with the plot. It's just some funny shit that need to be just mentioned. Just funny as a motherfucker. And see, the, the one thing about, the one thing about comedies is, is, like, the plot really don't fucking matter. Like, none of the story really matters. None of that shit matters. Like, if it's not funny, like, well, that's it. That, to me, that's all that matters in the comedy. Is it funny or is it not funny? Like, I don't care about the storyline. I don't care about the plot. I don't care about how well the actors did. None of that. If it's funny or not is all that matters to me. That's my only criteria for comedy. Yeah, it, it's true. But it actually got a plot, man. It actually got a mm -hmm. reason of why of what, like, it has a what, why, when type of thing. Like, you know, like, back in English class, they'll ask you the, the why, what, and when. Like, it got all of it in it. So it has a, actually yeah. a good plot to go along with it. And, like, it is so mm -hmm. funny, even the way, like, it started, because it's like, you got this whole different assumption of, like, who the dude is. You just see Chris Tucker going down, you know what I'm saying, the interstate in a fucking Mercedes. So you're like, oh, shit. And then, like, he does the shit that all fucking people do. Like, <laughs> this mm -hmm. motherfucker Ad living the song, <laughs> like yeah, like singing the song, but you ad living that shit at the same time, and it's like <laughs> you do that to like shit that you love because it's like one hundred percent, bro. Like, love the song so much, you make it your own, and you be adding your own type of shit, and you know whether it's in the car, in the shower, like and this, <laughs> and this just reminds me of me at work because how crazy. <clears throat> times that I be jamming at work in my truck and my doors be open. And I know people yeah. be looking at me, dude, he's having too much fun while he working, yo. So, <laughs> so this motherfucker, man, he he uh rolls up on this guy is his uh his ticket scalping guy. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's like so then we uh rolling. That's what his name was. He pulls up on rolling and he yeah. <laughs> This motherfucker said, he said, I got Lakers tickets, Dodger tickets, and Family of the Opera. <laughs> this motherfucker said, Family of the Opera. <laughs> Black people don't want to see that shit. And that was <laughs> so funny. And then he goes on, and then you can tell, like, I could tell from even the first time that I saw it, because he was like, he told Roland, he was like, man, I'm going to stop fucking with you, man. And he was like, you owe me. He was like, you owe me, Franklin, man, I don't know you shit. And I, I could tell. <laughs> Right there, I was like, I can tell what type of person he's gonna be. I was like, you can tell he's gonna be a guy. He asks people for a lot of favors, and he has fucked mm -hmm. over in the process. Great scam artist. Yes, I could tell from right there when he said you. Owe, he was like, you owe me, frankly, like man, I don't know you shit. And I was like, I can tell <laughs> he's a fucking scammer right there from that point. One hundred percent, bro. Man, listen, the, this motherfucker man was so goddamn funny in this movie. The the, the scene that you talk about, like just driving down the street and ad libbing these goddamn words and singing these songs and doing all this shit that he was doing, bro. Like to me, I feel like that whole scene was ad lib. Like the, the whole car scene, just riding down the street singing because he does that like in damn near every movie during in that in like that little time span he had the movie. Like he yeah. does that a lot. Like especially with music, like that shit is hilarious as fuck. I wonder if he picked the song. It wouldn't surprise me if it did, I, I, because see, this is another thing that I noticed, and see, that's why I love about going back and watching movies because you watch it when mm -hmm. you love, don't pay attention to some shit. He's mm -hmm. an producer of Money Talk. We haven't even said it. We talking about Money Talks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We are talking about. So we, uh, man, goodness gracious, Money Talks, man. <laughs> but uh, so we talking about Money Talks, a 1997 film. Um, yep. Chris Tucker. 
Baker, uh, I mean everybody, uh, Charlie Sheen. But um, but to get back to it, he's an executive producer, and I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know and, that either. It, it's like when he was when he left Rolling and he was getting in the car, like during the credits, you see executive producer Chris uh, Chris Tucker, and I was like, oh wow. I, I've never seen that movie like 50 times and I never looked at the credits. You know, they'd be playing while the movie's playing and he's an executive producer. Mm-hmm. So I can guarantee you, like, it wouldn't surprise me if you picked the songs. And also a lot of the things that are being said, I think a lot of that shit had to be ad-libbed. And it's oh, crazy yeah. they would give him because... Yeah. You got it. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just no, going to say, he'd been in a few films, you know, like dead presidents and stuff like that. But like his big yeah. break, we was talking about this the other week. Friday, yeah. see, Friday came yeah. out in five. So mm-hmm. you think about it, they had to film this movie in ninety, mm-hmm. and to come off of Friday and give him not only an executive producer uh, spot, but to give him that freedom that he had, because it seemed like a lot of that stuff was just really just him. Like, I, I think that it was one of them type situations where they were like, all right, this is, like, what's going on in this scene. Mm-hmm. But you really pretty much say what the fuck you want to say type thing. It seems like when you're watching it, it feels like it's just a lot of Chris Tucker. It's not even, like, Chris Tucker made Franklin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because, um, Brett Ratner, who actually directed the movie, um, this is the first time that him and Chris Tucker end up working together. But the next time mm-hmm. that him and Chris Tucker end up ends up working together, which is very interesting because of the success of Money Talks, which for us it was a success, and the publications and everything they were saying that it was pretty much a failure. But um, the next time that they end up working together will be three more times in the Rush Hour series. So this is the the first of four films that Brett Ratner and Chris Tucker ends up working together. And if and if you really watch Money Talks, you can tell like he kind of built that foundation with Brett Ratner to be able to be in like a Rush Hour and be able to be that character that he was and still be able to bring those funny moments and ad libs and everything else. So you know what I'm saying? It's it's interesting to see him um and hear him be an executive producer in this movie because I, I'm actually wondering the same thing. Like, I wonder if he's also um, an executive producer for Rush Hour. Well, but that that'll be that'll be some shit. We probably should have researched beforehand. But like, yeah, like, yeah, but yeah, it, it just surprised <laughs> me that, that it happened so early. Like, you wouldn't think that yeah somebody would you know get that that early in their career with him having really that one because when he was in. Um, dead president, like you know, he wasn't even really a supporting actor, he was like a supporting, supporting actor. Like, you know, yeah. he was important, don't get me wrong, he was important, but like, you know, to me, like Keith David was more important of being that, like, he was like really more of the, the supporting role, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. As far as that movie, Dead President, now he had a huge part in it, but. You know, not like Friday. Like Friday, yeah. Yeah. I used to do Chris Tucker, and um, but yeah, like you could tell, like when he left Roland, like I got it. I like this dude is is a damn scammer. So then he goes and he parks the damn car, and then his white guy comes up. He was like, "Man, you supposed to wash it? I take it for a joy ride." And I was like, "Yo, his mm-hmm. whole hustle, his whole hustle is work. It ain't even really the car wash. It's so he can just take people cars." To go, go to the, do what he got to do <laughs> to get these damn tickets, Man, and it's like it? it's like a whole foolproof plan to like he's using the car wash to have a ride mm-hmm. to the coliseum and also <clears throat> to be able to that's the best way to sell tickets, and so then yeah, at the time we introduced. Too, cause he told the doc, he told the guy, he was like, "Man, I've been watching. He's I've been driving around looking for you, man. Like, where you been? Like, man, <laughs> yeah, like, I've been here at the car wash, motherfucker. You know where I've been." So then, Charlie Sheen shows up. Now, Charlie Sheen is James Russell. You know what I'm saying? And James Russell, yeah. and- <laughs> he's a hater. He is a hater. 
straight hater, man. This motherfucker hater. The fact that he rode up on this man like that, man, was unnecessary. Way unnecessary. Because it's like, <laughs> it, you can tell, like, when after the, the scene go down, you get who James Russell is. So James Russell rolls up on him, and then <laughs> and he was the one. He's like, he's like, what you need? He was like, oh, let me guess, let me guess. Family of the Opera. He was like, I already seen it. He was like, wait a minute, you didn't see that <laughs> from Channel Five, <laughs> Channel Twelve, actually. <laughs> like, yeah. So he was like, you want to do it? That was a great scene too. That was a great scene though. That interaction between them was great. It was real great, man. Because what I liked about it was when he was like. <laughs> He was like, you want to do an interview? He was like, all right, cool. So then he was like, rolling. He was like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> he started fixing his hair, taking his shirt. And he was like, you ready? And so he was like, you know, I'm James Russell down at the car wash. And then he was like, uh, so he goes into Franklin. He was like, man, I'm just down here trying to make a living, man. What the fuck you think I'm doing? <laughs> he was like, can't like, say that. <laughs> said, say what? He said, like, fuck. He said, look, man, you can be telling me how to talk. <laughs> and then it was just, <laughs> It got confrontational that quick. But then it, they showed us kind of brushed each other. You know what I mean? Get off me, man. And, and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So then Carmen shows up and <laughs> he gets in the car with him. And then James Russell, man, because he didn't even get to get the story. So then he's they're riding in the car wash. And Carmen's like, when I'm going to get my money? And so <laughs> and he was like, man, I'm going to pay you. And he was like, when they was getting ready to get done with the car wash, and he told him he was going to kill him, he was like, wait, <laughs> you know, would you be mad at each other? He was like, can I get a hug? He was like, what about a kiss? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that motherfucker is crazy, bro. Man, a straight but up. The, I, the, the good, the, the funny part to me about this shit is when the goddamn interaction between him and Charlie Shane happened. And after all that bullshit that he just went through in the car with this motherfucker getting threatened to fucking die and everything else, we go back and start fucking with Charlie Sheen and now this motherfucker get the police called on. Over some fucking tickets, dude. And that's, tickets. Tickets. And then that's when I realized, like, he, okay, so he's a news reporter searching because he wants to be big time. So you can tell mm -hmm. he's all time. And it's like, okay, so you really went down to a car wash to arrest mm -hmm. a ticket scalper. <laughs> so you can tell, <laughs> like, really think Snitching, about man. Snitching. So it's like, you can tell, like, okay, this dude's career is to be a reporter, but obviously he hasn't had a big story, so he's just like, all right, well, I know this dude who's fucking people over on damn tickets. So it's like, I'm gonna get this dude arrested. And, it, and it's like, what it is, James Russell is searching for TV time. Yeah. So it, it seems like his bosses are like, hey, look, you need to give us something concrete that we can put on TV. And he thought that this could give them some concrete shit to put on there. But once he showed it to his boss, his boss like, the fuck is this? Like, right. this ain't nothing. And the greatest part is after he got, when he, um, when they showed him in the cell, and this is the thing, man. I don't know why I got oh, this. This was Dude. the funniest scene in the movie, bro. Man ego, man. Man ego. You 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 take it. Because this shit is so, funny. They sitting in the cell, right? Now, it's only two motherfuckers in the cell to begin with. It's phase on love, big ass, black ass, phase on love. And big word. Little, yeah, little skinny, tiny ass Chris Tucker. Now, Chris Tucker is such a goddamn scam artist and a con man that the whole time. He making up all kind of stories about what the fuck he in there for. He making up every story in the goddamn book. Talking about, they took me down, man. I had it, I had it all on me, man. I had everything. It was 70 cops around me, man. Just a whole bunch of bullshit. And he said, what he say? He said, then, you know what I'm saying? I, I, they were trying to get me, but I was like, nah. And he said, this motherfucker just came up and grabbed me. He was like, he grabbed you? He said, yeah, man, he just grabbed me. He said, how he grabbed you? He said, did he grab you like this? Like he grabbed his arm and then he said, or did he grab me like this? And then he wrapped his arms around him. And he was like, nah, man, it wasn't like that. He was like, come on, man, don't touch me. It wasn't like that. But he's still talking. So he was like, hold on, man. You, you mean to tell me they did what? So the whole time he's telling this story, this nigga face I love is undressing and touching all over Chris Tucker. 
he don't even realize that this man is about to <laughs> violate him. <laughs> so, so as he telling the story, he finally realized what the fuck going on. And the first thing they said, hey, God, come on, man. Get me back out of here, man. Hey, somebody come get me. Somebody help me. Man, that is the funniest scene in this goddamn movie, bro. That shit, that shit is too funny, man. Cause, and then he making up shit, talking about all my girls screaming like, Franklin. And he was like, yeah. and then <laughs> funny because Faison said under his breath, yeah, they be like that. <laughs> <laughs> And then when he grabbed him, when he grabbed him, he was like, hey, what you doing? He said, where your shirt at? <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so funny because the grin on face, I love face was so funny. Because you couldn't even see his smile. You could just see his damn cheeks. Man, just man. sick, bro. Just sick, there. bro. It was hilarious. So then, now, I think that this is when the plot starts. I think all of that shit was just I mean, like, it, it started really with James Russell going down there fucking with him because if James Russell would have left him alone, you know what I'm saying, all mm -hmm. this other wouldn't have happened. So then mm -hmm. they go to transport him, which is kind of crazy because everybody got on jumpsuits, but he still got on his wife beater and damn blue jeans. So, and I don't understand yeah. why they trying to transport him so quickly, but hey, it is what it is. So they tie him up to this fucking... Uh, what was he? Uh, I think it was French. Um, yeah, it was. It was a French criminal. Yeah, a French criminal dude. So mm -hmm. they, um, Valard or uh, Valier, Billiard or something like that. Yeah, and he always called him Frenchy. So I'm gonna call him Frenchy. Yeah. So, so he tied him up to him, and so they get on the bus. He's like, "Man, come on to the back." And this motherfucker threw his ass. Down. <laughs> 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 his facial expression when he threw him. In the He's like, sit down, shut up. He's like, man, what the fuck wrong with you? He's like, man, he know where I'm from. He's like, man, you better come on to the back. And then he tried to get up again. He slammed him down. He's like, okay, where did we get off the bus? He said, where did we get off the bus? <laughs> Frail last talking all that bullshit, man. <laughs> talking all that bullshit. So these motherfuckers are rolling down. They rolling down the bus. And this motherfucker starts singing fucking Michael Jackson. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Hey, boy, he kills Michael Jackson, bud. Like yeah. he was on this shit. So then, while they on the damn bus, this motherfucker. Well, before I get to that, this motherfucker said, "Will y'all hurry up, please?" He was like, "Man, I'm ready to go to jail." He's like, "All my cousins in there." He said, "That's where all my friends is." So yeah, then, he's supposed to be supposed to be hyping himself up to get there. Yeah, yeah. So then we see all of these damn black suburbans. They setting up shop. They are going over this bridge. So then the black suburbans block off the bridge on the one side. And then they show the other side, and then it blocked it off. So they riding down. You're like, oh, shit, it's about to be a prison break. So then yeah. we <clears> the <throat> one cop, he was looking under the bus for the, uh, you know, if it had any explosives on it. Then mm -hmm. I noticed, like, when he was looking under the bus, like, he stopped looking, and he was just looking in the rearview mirror. So I was like, you know, that kind of tell you, like, wait a minute. He didn't really look like he was supposed to look. So then the bus mm -hmm. gets to the... Is they put a damn spike strip down, blow the wheels out, and then he throws Chris Tucker down. Well, Franklin has to, then the whole middle of the bus blow up. So then all these men jumping off helicopters and shit, all this type of shit. So they shooting everybody. And then they go, and this is where the scene where you notice if you really look, there's small shit that happened that uh -huh. I think they didn't really want to redo it. That's like one of those type things. Okay, for instance, right? Uh -huh. One of my movies. Commando, right? So in Commando, mm -hmm. there's a scene where they was uh they was in the yellow uh Porsche 911, and then they they had wrecked it because that's when he dropped my man off of the ledge. So he had to yeah. push. It was on the side. He had to push it on the swanson. Had to push it off the um, and then it started driving it. When the car turned, it was brand new, but then. A camera <laughs> shot, and then it was damaged again. <laughs> <laughs> so I left that shit in there. And yeah. You don't notice that shit unless you're somebody stupid like me. Like, cause I was like, man, when the car turned, it was brand new, and then it then blacked again, and then it was uh, damaged again. So in this scene, mm -hmm. when a man go on the bus to get Frenchie, he grabs him and kisses him in the damn uh. 
the the handcuffs. The handcuffs was off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when he grabbed him, he kissed him, the handcuffs was off. And then once he put his hands back down, and then the handcuffs were tight again. They so connected was, again. Yeah, so yeah. he was like, we got the time. We ain't got the time to do all of this. So he was like, man, we're just going to bring him with us. And then we get the helicopter scene. Oh, man. These motherfuckers are going back and forth. They having a whole conversation in French. This nigga, Chris Tucker, is trying to act like he know what the hell they saying. So they going, they going back and forth. He asking them all kind of questions. I'm like, yeah, man, we can stop off, man. You can just drop me off over here at the McDonald's, man. It's whatever. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of hungry anyway. Stop giving me something to eat. He's like, man, I'm glad we got up out of there, man. We made it, man. We did it. We did it, man. Yeah, we, we did, did it. That shit is a... Yeah, that shit was funny as hell. We did it, man. We did it. Yeah, we did it. I'm like, man, y'all ain't do shit. You, you, you didn't even know nothing about this, bro. So once that shit happened, man, they get to talking, continuing the conversation. They actually planning everything that's going, that's supposed to be going on in the, you know, saying in the future. And then he get to asking them about the diamonds. And then once he get to ask them about the diamonds, you know, what I'm saying to get his information. I think his uh the dude's name was Dude Dovnay or. The the Vray or something like that. I forgot the dude's name. It, it started with a D though, I know that. But he kept talking to him and then once that happened, he was about to uh he was about to say something and then they realized that Franklin is still in the goddamn uh <laughs> they still they realized he's still in the goddamn helicopter. So once they did it, they was like, well shit, we gotta kill him and then we could just get away. This nigga Franklin realized instantly, like, oh, I'm about to die. This nigga instantly jumped the fuck out the goddamn helicopter. <laughs> no, no, the goddamn no. Water. Oh, look, you can't skip this part. You can't skip this part. So this motherfucker, so they were sitting there saying, and see what they was talking in French, but some of the stuff in French words is still American words. Yeah. So he was able to pick out Jaguar, uh, the Auto Expo, and Diamonds, and $20 yeah. million or some shit like that. So they thinking he can't really understand what they're saying. So then my man picks up the axe. <laughs> he was like, and he was like, don't move. He's like, baby, baby, doo doo. That shit was stupid, man. Hey, he shot that shit out. He was like, man, what the hell wrong with you? He was like, man, trying to cut a brother's hand off. He was like, man, you need to stop loving somebody. <laughs> That's when they was explaining they was going to kill his ass. So then when yeah. they reached him, do something, he pushed him down and he jumped in the water. So then this motherfucker, he gets out the water. And so then it goes to, to James Russell. And then that's when James Russell gets fucking fired because he got mad at dude because he didn't like his damn, you know, video of getting Franklin arrested or whatever. Yeah. So I'm saying, yo, you fired. So then it goes back to Franklin and Franklin is uh, at this diner. And then what are the odds? Fucking police walks into the damn diner. This damn dumb clown knocks over his damn shit, make a damn scene of him. So they probably wouldn't even seen him. If he didn't damn yeah. knock over the damn bowl. So then they show his ass on the news and then the shootout happens. And so then he runs from the cops. And then that's when he comes up with the plan because he escaped the cops by jumping on the back of a bus. So he gets on yep. the back of the bus and then he jumps down. He sees a, a billboard on the back of the bus of James Russell. So he thinks in his head, well, he's the one who got me in this shit. Like I wouldn't mm -hmm. even go through what I'm going through if it wasn't for him. So he calls James Russell ass. And he was like, yo, meet me up at the docks. So he come to the docks with a damn gun. This motherfucker pushes his ass in the water. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, it's cold. He's like, yeah, I know. He's like, I was in this motherfucker earlier. So yeah, he, yeah. So he's like, look, man, I need to clear, you need, you need to help me clear my name. And he was like, because I didn't do that. So James Russell come up with the idea of, now this is what kills me. It's like, this is the, what reporters would do to get a story. So this dude, he takes him to his house, a uh, uh, no known criminal, never met him mm -hmm. before, like, until he seen him at the car wash to get him locked up over scalping tickets. And he was like, yo, I'm going to take you. He was like, man, look, I can't stay here. All. He was Because he said he going to give him the opportunity to share a story, but he was like, I don't want to share the story until Monday because that's when Sweet Sweet happens. So he's like, yeah. So he takes him to his house. He was like, man, I can't stay here for two days. He said, you're not. You're coming to the wedding. What the fuck? This motherfucker hey, on man. the run. On the run. Listen, listen. This is this is one thing I will say about about uh about James. I mean um Russell. 
Like he made sure he he kept that. He made sure he was gonna get that story, bro. Oh yeah. He was gonna get that story regardless of anything that was gonna happen. He was gonna make sure that story was gonna happen, bro. Dude, he in in, in the <laughs> to and then the thing is, I think he knew, like, cause we haven't met, you know, his wife's people. Well, not wife, but his fiance people yet. And I his think, fiance. Knew, yeah, they're not gonna even know what the hell is going on. At all, because they high class, they high society. High class probably don't even watch the fucking news. Yeah. So he was like, oh, he was like, go, he was like, go take a shower. He was like, lose the earring and do something with that hair. He was like, man, we just talking about man, my dude is tight. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, man, this club better be. He said this club better be clean too. Fucking dirty ass white boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you, we cannot leave this out because this. We you didn't think it had nothing to do with nothing at the time, but it ended up being important. While he was taking the shower, the TV is on and they're showing and the they ad. talking about Vic Damone. Vic Damone. <laughs> that's the most listen, that's the most important part of this next scene that's coming up. That's what everybody failed to realize. That when I had when I had went back and watched it like right after seeing it, I didn't I forgot that he even was seeing this whole infomercial. Because it was like an infomercial about like his greatest hits or some shit like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so like I forgot that shit was even on the TV until I had went back and watched it again. And that's why I was like, "Oh, that's where he got that shit from." So they get to the wedding, and they get he gets well, introduced it, to everybody. Wedding, well, wedding, wedding huh? rehearsal. It was a wedding, wedding rehearsal. rehearsal. Yeah, wedding rehearsal. My fault. The wedding at the end. So they get to the wedding rehearsal, and they, you know, what I'm saying they he mixing and mingling with everybody. You know, what I'm saying he telling them keep a low profile, keep it cool, and then out of everybody to meet, out of everybody. Franklin got to run into, bro. Franklin runs into the fiance's dad, bro. This exchange is the, one of the best exchanges in the whole damn movie. He get to talk to him, they get to connect him, whatever, and then he says, I'm Vic Damone's son. I'm Vic Damone Jr. And then he says, Vic Damone had a son? He said, yeah, man, you know, my mom, da da da, and he tell the whole story about how his mom and Vic Damone met. So now, <laughs> now, while everything is going on, they what what happened? I think it was like a little moment or something, and then he asked them to sing or some shit like that. Well, well, what it, it was uh, so when they was when they was pulling up, <clears throat> when they was pulling up to the to the crib, and he was like James Russell. He was like, man, you hustling son of a bitch. And then he was like, man, you about to get married and retire and all this type of shit. So he's walking up. Yeah. He was like night your name is john smith and then he's like uh he's like man i'm me and then all the type shit and he was like don't say nothing about my wife's weight he was like she's real sensitive about her weight and so then that's when he met him and he's like i'm Vic Damon jr so it goes in and then that's when he he sees grace and he was like yeah. you're fat. <laughs> oh yeah i forgot about that you fat she was like i'm fat he was like yeah phd Pretty hot and tempting. Come on, man. That, yeah, I, I can't believe I forgot that part, man. So then, so then that's when he um he was like, "Do you mind if I do a toast?" And so then he does this uh very white toast because these people are just oblivious. Other than no, other, I was like, yeah, so the dad recognized it. No, no, the no, the, the mom, mom recognized it. Yeah, mom, she leaned up. She was like, "Ain't isn't that very white?" <laughs> 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 and so then he asked to use the phone. And, oh man! So then he, this motherfucker calls his girl, and his girl oh, is popping, man. and like he's fucking yelling and shit. Don't even realize it, he's feeling everything. This motherfucker picked up a stapler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What the damn shit is that? This motherfucker still in cigars and a stapler. And then he walks out, and then he was like, hey, um, my, "My man say, you know, is there a problem?" He's like, oh, he's like, Sammy Davis Jr. got arrested again. <laughs> <laughs> That's just stupid, man. And then he's like, I gotta go. And then, dude, one of my favorite scenes, one of my favorite scenes is when they when he was leaving, and and James Russell's like, Man, where you going? He's like, You're going to your partner, aren't you? He's like, look, man, I'm going to my girl, she's pregnant and she needs me. And then uh, he was trying to walk off, but then he seen those cop calls because the cops was tapping her phone. So mm -hmm. then riding up the street, 
And so then he goes back and he's like, man, what did we say about that sweet, sweet again? So James Russell's driving the net. That's like one of my favorite scenes is when they was driving to his girlfriend's house. And he was like, uh, so then they're finally getting into that conversation that they needed to have before they even went to the damn wedding rehearsal. And so he's yeah. like, they're talking to each other. And then he was calling him like, like they was getting into it about, he was like, man, he was like, man, he was like, man, I figured your white ass out. He was like, man, you he'll, you'll do anything for a story, no matter who you step on to get it and all that type shit. He was like, you need to get your priorities straight. And then this motherfucker said, said my priorities is <laughs> for murder. <laughs> he said, I'm going to slap you. He was like, man, he said, I'm going to slap you because he said, they call me Snapple, Pop, and I will pop your ass in the mouth. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? This, the one thing about this movie, bro, like, that that I enjoyed, man, was the fact that it it brought two different senses of humor to this whole shit, right? Like you got the naturally funny guy in Chris Tucker, who's really supposed to be the the main character, the, the one that's supposed to really be funny. But then, like in a way, you got Charlie Sheen, who plays like this weird comic relief type dude, even though it's not comic relief, but. It's like he plays like the secondhand man so well, and it's like he brings this witty humor to it. It's like he's not naturally mm-hmm. funny, but in a sarcastic, like great timing kind of way, like he has his moments in this movie to where it's like he did a, a damn good job at really being serious, but at the same time being able to dominate in them funny moments. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then his timing, and then like he had these weird moments, <laughs> but like, um, he was like this nerd. It's like if he knew something yeah. about it, and this nerd because he did it earlier when when he took the handcuffs off of Franklin when he told him to take a shower. He was mm-hmm. like, "Man, how do you do that?" He was like, "Oh, well, I did a I did a story on um, on uh, escape artists." So yeah. when they pull up to Franklin's girl house, and so they get into an argument, and then she starts talking about how you know he asked her about the baby because she was pregnant, all this type of shit. So then this motherfucker said. I did a story on pre pre the nature and all this shit. And so he goes into the stupid shit. Yeah. So then police, they come, they knocking on the door. And and then this scene, like when they was running on the building, the building, mm-hmm. and the one cop just busting at him. And then the other cop yeah. was like, look, why are you shooting at everybody? And, the, and then the one cop was like, man, he wanted for, you know, killing cops and all this type of shit. And I noticed even before you get to the end, it's like, well, why is he so lax? Because, like, the old dude, the old cop was kind of like, why are you shooting at everybody? You know, like, it seems like he yeah. didn't want him to die. You know what I'm saying? And so then right. you figure out during the film why this dude was so lax on killing Franklin Hatchet. And so, yeah. But, like, to get back to Charlie Sheen, like, even in that little moment, like, it might have been small, but it's just like he would have these moments where it's like it's like these nerd scenes that he would have. And he had it a couple of times because he does it again mm-hmm. a little bit later. So then when they left there, that's when Franklin tried he told uh James Russell to drive him to the red camel. And he was like, when when they was in a helicopter, yeah. he saw a stamp on um uh, his name was I think it was uh du- Duploy. That's what the dude name was. That was uh, Frenchie's the man's y, yeah. the right hand man. So they try to go up to uh, the door of the red camera. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker said, James Russell said, let me handle this. That shit was a no go. So, <laughs> so my man opened up the little people. He was like, hey, here's like James Russell from the channel 12 Channel News. He was like, I'm here to do reports on nightclubs. He was like, oh, you're the investigator reporter. He was like, yes. Say get the fuck out of here! <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> and then, and then that old white boy shit. This motherfucker said, "He said I'm gonna do a report on this place and shut this place down forever." <laughs> that shit is stupid, man. And he was like, "Man, fuck that, man." He was like, "I'm gonna bring the red camera to us." He's like, "How are you gonna do that?" And he was like, "Give me a quarter." And then this motherfucker flipped to the page. Like, man, will you give me a quarter? So then this motherfucker give him a quarter. He calls the red camel and say he's Mike from Michigan and there's a bomb in the building and all this type of shit. And I don't know why yeah. he's freaking out. He said, <clears throat> hey, man, I'm 
hang up the damn phone and he's out there like, man, fuck <laughs> and all the type of shit. So then he does this bomb threat and then all these people start running out. And so they then they follow the boy and then this motherfucker walks him to a, into a damn ambush and then they run into a damn uh, convenience store and then that's when the damn camera catch him and James Russell on damn mm-hmm. t- now both of these motherfuckers wanted for their murder. Right. <clears throat> so what what was funny, what was funny about happening after that, that's when Franklin and Russell went back to Grace's house. And then they're having Brett, well, James is having down. You know, he's talking to his wife and she he's trying to tell her. And this is the crazy part. He's telling her, oh, babe, this is really important. And she's like, more important than our wedding? And it's like this motherfucker yeah. is damn naive to the fact that you can't tell your fiance you got some big important mm. shit happening and y'all get married in a couple of days. Like, what kind you, of just had the re- you just had the wedding rehearsal. Just, and then you left that early. Mm. And so he <clears> the <throat> with uh with her dad. And he was like, what's in the paper? He's like, oh, shit. And he's on the front page of the damn paper. And so then yeah. he said, the auto expo shit. So he asked my man, like, hey, what you, you get the, uh, the newlyweds? He's like, oh, I already got it. So he shows them, uh, he shows Franklin the the his and hers watches. He was like, yeah. no, but what's funny before he showed him that watch, he showed him his room. He was like, man, he was like, your house. He was like, hey, loan me a million dollars. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck. So he shows them the watches and he was like, he was like, they're tight and all. He was like, that's some Ike Turner shit. But he was like, I know what they want. He was like, uh, they want this uh this racer car or whatever. This European car. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I'm gonna get that in two days. He was like, I know a place. So then this motherfucker <laughs> take this dude down to the auto expo. Sitting there looking at all these cars, and no, what was funny? It was it was real small, real small. But like when they sat down, he saw the the air dude sitting there, and he was like, man, <clears throat> thing going <laughs> like how the fuck you know this motherfucker on the <laughs> eleven <laughs> chain? I was like, man, I just thought it was so funny because that that shit was racist, dude. It was racist as fuck. Yeah, like how you gonna go up to this dude and say how's the seven eleven chains going? And then I don't know. <laughs> didn't know what the fuck he was saying or if he just guessed that shit and that shit ended up being right. <laughs> I don't know which one it was. Yeah. So then they're sitting there and then the then the Jaguar finally comes up and then there's the bit war going on and then Franklin goes and calls the fucking police. And then this is my second favorite part because like the, the bride dude, he comes out and he's like, uh, he's like, hey, the police coming. He's like, the police want to talk to you. And so then he says that they're down there and then Charlie Sheen, well, James Franklin, he sees his ass. He's like, look, I need to talk to you. And so then he was like, man, what the fuck are you doing out here? He said, man, me and God just died here, making some hoes and chilling. Yeah, <laughs> making like, some hoes and chilling, man. <laughs> Charlie Sheen's like, oh, it's like a G dog, flossing with the posse, chilling with <laughs> <at> the grill. <laughs> like, what the fuck does that mean? He was like, look, man, I wanted to kick your, I would kick your ass. Then they started fighting. And then the funniest part, when he got Franklin down, he got to punch him and punch that fucking wall. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Die See, that's the, that's the once again, bro. That just go to show you just the, the great fucking acting on both sides. Like the fact that you know what I'm saying you got this one guy who is basically a, a, a street hustler, and then you got another dude who he's still a hustler, but he's like more so of like a, a, a corporate hustler. Like he has to be able to network and, and make relationships and everything else. In a, in a different sense that, you know what I'm saying, Franklin does because Franklin got to do the same thing. He got to, you know what I'm saying, he got to network and make relationships too, but his is more so just on a, a, a total, you know what I'm saying, different situation compared to, uh, <clears throat> compared to, you know what I'm saying, how Charlie Sheen's character is. And if you if you really pay attention to it, like, you, you kind of see Franklin kind of take over this whole, situation between him and Charlie Sheen character because like he started like to become leader at like the whole investigation for him. Yeah and then just to be smart enough because that's why like you said he's a great hustler. Like both of them are hustlers. Mm-hmm. But to sit there yes. and say to to see himself in the paper, flip the page over 
see the auto expo uh -huh. and then hard enough to be like hey what did you get the newlyweds you know what i'm saying so he was like well yeah. i'm gonna lose this guy because he got money and he's gonna do whatever he can to make his daughter happy so this motherfucker down here bent all the way up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a damn jaguar when he's already bought these his and her watches and uh -huh. so then like just that you know, so then he goes down, he goes down to where the Jaguar is. He goes look under the dash to try to find it because he heard them say that in the uh, helicopter. And then Dubois come out, he starts shooting at him. So then they have a car chase. So then he finally leaves. And then he finally get a chance to look up under the dash. And um, well, but while that was going on, Frenchie now grabbed uh, James Russell in the fucking bathroom because he was cleaning up his uh -huh. face. Frankly, fucked his whole shit up. So he grabs him. And it's like I'm gonna use him as bait to get the diamonds back because he was like, if he got the jaguar, yep. then we know that they're gonna contact each other. And he was like, I give you him, you give me my diamonds back. So he finds the diamonds and then he meets up. Uh, James Russell, not James Russell, but Franklin Hatchet meets meets up with uh with Paula, <laughs> and um so then. They end up, um, it was so funny because he was sitting there talking to her and then he's saying that we could take these diamonds and, you know, live our life and all this type of shit. So then he calls yeah. him, his mama. Well, his mama calls him. And he was like, look, yo, this the fuck is the deal. And she was like, Franklin, what are you talking about? I'm like, mama, mama, mama. <laughs> I'm like, mama, I, <laughs> like, I didn't know it was you. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> and all this type of shit. And then, Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. They had went to uh no, he had got uh no, that was before then. They went to see his cousin and he was like, yo, because they had to go get the guns. Yeah, he had to get the guns and he told him, he was like, look, only one, he's like, ain't no white beaver made it out of here. So we just sit there, shut up, and then we'll get out of here. And so then he goes up to Aaron and and it was so funny because he was like, man, he said, look, man, it's just a silly ass reporter. He was like, what y'all gonna do? Report on my lifestyle? So then they get into it. So <laughs> he was like, Aaron, how far we go back? Pity Pat, tic tac toe, <laughs> red light, green light, <laughs> red light, green light. <laughs> Apparently, they had time his kids down, red light, green light. So then he takes him in there to get the guns and shit. And then, like I say, another one of those nerd moments. Fucking James Russell, Ooh. like, Oh, I did a report on those on those types of guns and other type of shit. He put the red beam on his head. And he was like, Man, you sure you ain't no cop? He's like, Yeah, I'm sure I'm not a fucking cop. He was like, Aaron, man, look, no disrespect. He said, We're gonna be doing a lot of running. So he was like, yeah, I'm gonna just couple of these, couple of these, no, 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 all this type of shit. So then they end up leaving. And then then Don't forget, don't forget he made the promise to him that he was gonna uh do him a, a favor if he needed him too. Yeah. Yeah, that is important because it was like, hey, if you need me, give me a call. Mm -hmm. So then, this motherfucker had ended up. Um, <clears throat> so when he left there, like James, he called, uh, well, Frenchie called on James Russell phone because he had paged him or whatever. And because they got, because, oh, because Paula asked him, well, well, maybe this James Russell dude can clear your name. He was like, man, yeah. fuck a Russell. So they're mad at each other because of that fight that they had. And so then when he beat them, he seen that Frenchie had him. He was like, hey, shoot him. He said, tell him to shoot you in a Dula Amagala. He was like, <laughs> tell him to shoot you behind the Dula Amagala. He said, you won't feel shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so then he was like, Jack Franklin, this shit ain't no joke. So then my man, Frenchie, tried to tell him to meet him at this hangar. And mm -hmm. he was like, nah, he's like, you meet him on his turf. You ain't got no shot. He said, at least if you meet where I want us to meet, he said, at least we got a shot. So he tell him to meet him at the uh, Coliseum at 2 a.m. So Franklin come up with the whole plan to, he <clears> called <throat> up Carmen, because Carmen, he owes him $25,000. So then he calls, what's my man's name? Uh, Roland, he calls Roland, because Roland mm -hmm. can the whole Coliseum thing. Like turn on the lights and put them on the big screen, and all of that type stuff. So then he calls those two cops that gave Paula the uh, card because he was like, if I can get all of these people down here, I can kill, you know, four birds with one stone type of thing. Yeah. 
But I don't think he's <clears throat> gonna go down the way that it ended up going down. Yeah, so he got well, this is where um they went to the stadium, right? They was at the stadium in this one. Yeah, yeah, the Coliseum. Yeah, all the way in California, man, where uh, uh, the Corporal USC Trojans play. So they in there, they, they you know what I'm saying, negotiating everything. Now, this was the cool setup. I forgot that Aaron was, was there with Franklin. I forgot all about that. You don't well, see him, you don't see him in there, but he definitely is in there. Yeah, because he called him, but he didn't answer the phone. Yeah. He was already there. What, what yeah, so, could have been what that was. But but this is the thing though. Could he have already been there? Because remember the cops showed up early. Because Franklin mm-hmm. was walking around and then the cops popped up on him early. Mm-hmm. And so he's arguing with the cops. And um, and so they're like, man, you put your gun down. He's like, man, you lower your gun. He's like, you lower your gun. He said, no, you lower your gun. And then mm-hmm. like he finally, he was like, he was like, if you don't want to lower your gun, we're gonna shoot you. He's like, well, we're gonna be some shot up motherfuckers. Cause he was like, I'm not putting my gun down. And so, then, <laughs> <laughs> so then he finally gives the old cop his gun, and the old cop shoots his partner. And then that's the plot yeah. twist. And then we figure out why the cop, the old cop, didn't want to shoot him. Cause he was like, once he shot him, he was like, look, you shot my partner. He's like, no, you shot your goddamn partner. He was like, hey, you're a gun. He was like, where are the diamonds? And that's when you figured out he was on French's payroll. And that's why mm-hmm. I'm so hype about killing Franklin because he was working with Frenchie the whole time. And so then he gets away because Aaron had shot that damn uh, lamp pole and it came down and it hit the, um, the old cop. So he takes yep. off running. And then while he's running, this motherfucker runs in the damn uh, Carmen and his guys. <clears throat> then Carmen is like, yo, he was like, look, I got this. Uh, he's like, look, he said for $15 million, you know, y'all boys to do whatever, whatever. And then he changed yeah. it to 10. He was like, I thought you said 15. He's like, man, I ain't doing all this running around for free. Just <laughs> 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 And so then, and then they had ran into, cause Frenchie and them showed up. Um, yeah. Helicopter, and then they were going down the alley. Boys with yeah, and then then Carmen guys and Frenchie's guys they get into a shootout. Franklin tried to run, and then he puts him on the damn big screen. And he was like, "Yo, he's like, what y'all? He's like, why y'all shooting?" He's like, "I'm the only motherfucker know what the diamonds is. So if you kill me, you don't get shit." And so then he sent the no, boy. No, no, no. You underselling it. You underselling it. He said, "Ha ha," and then ran off. <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck did he juke the camera? I never understood that part. That shit was funny to motherfucker though. He juked the camera and then ran off. Like, what the fuck is that, bro? That shit was funny as hell, bro. Cause it be it be sometimes it be the smallest shit, dude. Yeah, that man. be like oh fucking funny. Like just like when they was in the cell with uh with Faze I Love, and he was like, yeah, man, I'm a girl. Like Franklin, it was just just little. <laughs> Yeah, they be doing that. <laughs> Hell <laughs> yeah, bro. That shit is hilarious. And, and, uh, so then uh, he sent somebody up to the control booth where Rowling was, and then the boy, he starts shooting it up, and then and then it was so crazy. Even this small scene. So Rowling escapes, and then my man goes in the control room, so then they go back to Rowling, and Rowling, he's like, 911. He said, yeah, I want to report a shootout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, i wait. <laughs> they put his ass on hold. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot out at the Coliseum, and then 911 people right. put him on. And it was just like, just little shit like that. It's fucking funny. And so then, like, during this whole time, damn Char- uh, James Franklin, he uh, grabs, he finds some, uh, what do you call those things? Grenades. He finds some grenades, take the grenade off, get his handcuffs off, and then he put the grenades, he put like five grenades up under the helicopter. And so then yep. he knocks out the, <clears throat> the damn fire extinguisher and then he takes off. And so Franklin is running and then Frenchie finally catches up with that clothesline his ass. And then he started beating, yeah. his, beating the shit out of him. And he was like, he's like, first I'm going to shoot your knee. He said, your right knee. He said, then I'm going to shoot the other one. 
And he was like, you got that, homie? And then he looked up and was like, oh, he called me homie. And so then James Russell come, knocks his head. <laughs> then they start beating his ass, they start double teaming his ass. Don't you ever call me your goddamn homie and friend yet? I thought I was gonna die, but listen to that shit. And so then, like him and Franklin run up, and then Franklin's like, "Yo, he was like, fuck that shit, man. I ain't gonna die over these diamonds." And so then this motherfucker, he he show he gets the diamonds, and then um he was like, "Yo, he was like, he said, I give, like, I give up, man. He said, like, I was just bullshitting." And so then he throws the diamond. Diamonds go fucking everywhere. And everywhere. So then the police comes, and then Frenchie tries to escape. And then he's like, man, he's like, fuck, man, he's gonna get away. And then he shows them all the pins from the grenades, and he was like, he ain't gonna get too far. And so then they fucking, uh, oh man, how can I skip this part? When he left the fucking, when guy left the uh, the uh, the uh, auto expo, that's when mm-hmm. they find because James, what Grace was brushing her teeth, and then she's watching the news. Mm-hmm. And you see her husband on the news while it's fucking murder with uh, with Franklin Hatchet. And then he's yep. like, and then he's like, he's like, so he's like, so who is Victor Mon Jr.? It ain't no fucking Victor Mon Jr. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no fucking Victor Mon Jr. I was like, he was hot, but and uh and she was like, no, and all this type of shit. So uh so he's mad because he's like, you're not gonna marry the dude. And it was so funny because he said the wedding's off. And then his wife is like, "Man, we got three hundred people showing up." He said, "He said they come here, they show up, they eat, they go to fuck home." <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we can't forget, we can't forget about the part, man, where my man Aaron showed up with him in the big bodyguard, man, with the big ass RPG, look, blowing shit up, saving they ass. Oh yeah, yeah, and and then when we about to let them have it. Oh yeah, for sure, because when he had shot up, when he had shot up uh, the dudes. Cause Franklin then was getting shot at from the um, front of control booth by yep. the blood. And uh, so they fell down. And then James Russell was like, look, man, he said, I want to apologize for getting you into this shit. And he was like, man, that apology don't mean shit. And then he was like, <laughs> he's like, but thank you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so then they ended up, um, so really the, the whole thing ended up being like, um, Franklin was able to clear his name and all that type yep. shit. Cause uh, when Frenchie tried to leave, the whole helicopter blows up. Blew the fuck up. They was to tell his story and all this type of shit. And like I said, man, it was like even though it's a comedy movie, it's like the whole objective was he got arrested on some bullshit because James Russell signed him up, and then mm-hmm. James Russell team up. And then in the damn plot twist of that, James Russell end up. Being on the um, running from the cops for yep. being with him because they're like, oh, well, he's accomplished to him because they were seen together in that fucking store. So the whole thing was, I got arrested on some bullshit. I'm gonna use this dude to clear my name because in the process of getting arrested, I get stuck with this dude who breaks out of fucking prison. Right. So now I'm gonna for killing police and for ticket scalping and all of this type of shit. And he's like, well, while in the process of trying to clear my name, why not try to get a come up at the same time? Because yeah. he ended up... Cause the, Saving the some of the diamonds. Yeah, because he had... uh, That was at the wedding, and it was mm-hmm. like... The, he opened up the ring <laughs> thing, and it was this big-ass stone. And he was like... Hell yeah. It's not the ring. He was like, I know. He was like, don't worry about it. And he was like... He leaned in. How many diamonds did you keep? He was like, enough. <laughs> He was like, man. And he showed him that big ass earring. He said, no, he said, he said, can we do this? He was like, man, this is sacred. <laughs> he mm-hmm. was like, God ain't gonna matter. He's like, he's like, God don't care. I was just like, <laughs> so the motherfucker <laughs> said, God forgive me. And he was like, he will. They get married. And I said, he shows him the big ass diamond in his ear. So it was mm-hmm. like to sit there and to have this plan to to clear your name, but it's like, yeah, I'm going to clear my name, but I'm going to get a come up in the process, too. So. Oh, facts. Once again, it just go to show you how good of a hustler he was. And then James Russell, he wasn't able to save it to Monday, but still, he got his big story. You know what I'm saying? He got his big mm-hmm. team. So he went through all this shit. He risked 
messing up his relationship with his in-laws, losing his fucking fiance, all yep. of this shit, get wanted for murder, all for a fucking story. Almost getting killed. Yeah, almost getting killed <laughs> just for a fucking story. Like, that is crazy, dude. Reporters, yeah. and I bet you there are some fucking reporters, real life reporters like that. I guarantee it. Hell yeah. But it's just like, what kills me about the whole thing is the whole fact of, I'm going to take you to my wedding. It's like, dude, I mean, I know you got to have something for the script. So it don't make sense if you decide to at home the whole weekend. But like, who comes up with this shit? Like, yo, I'm going to bring a dude that wanted for murder and escaping prison. I'm going to bring you to my fucking wedding. I'm going to bring you around the people that I'm about to damn marry. I'm about to marry my, my fiance and I'm going to bring you around her people and all these up the ass rich people. I'm going to bring you here. And then it's so funny because I forgot the whole part of when he said, hey, pick something in the, um, he said, pick something in the closet that fits. And he was like, hurry up and we late. And then he comes out, he was like, you had to pick that suit, huh? And he was like, he said, uh, he said, I look, he said, I look good, right? He was like, yeah, that's my favorite fucking suit. He was like, don't be mad at me because I look better than you in your own shit. So I should be every man of the month. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's me. So he said, you wouldn't know nothing about that goofy ass white boy. He was like, fuck up. <laughs> he, said, he said, you fuck up the suit, we got a problem. He looked at him and said, fuck the suit, we already got a problem. And then looked yeah. at each other and then looked away. That shit was funny as fuck. Dude, that was so many just funny parts that we didn't even mention in this fucking movie. Yeah. But like like I said, I think that I I do think what you said is true. Long as it's funny, you don't really never care about the plot. But mm-hmm. what made, I think that's what to our eyes anyway, what makes this movie great was yeah. the fact of it had a plot and it was able to give you these memorable moments within the plot of the story. And I think that's what separates this movie from just being a funny movie. Yeah, I mean it's you. You also got to remember too, man. It's it's not just the the plot, man. It's the acting as well. Like, like I said, for them for them two to be playing kind of the same character, but in a in a way from two different backgrounds. I mean, they really were the same character. They they was two hustlers. They was two dudes just really trying to make it and and find a way to get what they thought was you know what I'm saying deserved to them. And then for them to, you know what I'm saying, be on opposite sides of the track at the beginning of the movie and then realize that, you know what I'm saying, they had a lot of commonality. And then at the end, you know what I'm saying, you see them, them, their best friends, you know what I'm saying, uh, Franklin's the best man at James' uh, wedding. So, you you know what I'm saying, you really see just how, you know what I'm saying, how, how similar they were throughout this whole movie. Because they just did whatever it is <clears throat> that was needed to them to make sure that they get what they got. This is true. This is true. Uh, I think that says a lot about James Russell. I get into that when we get to the fire flames, but um, but yeah, like you're right, man. Like the actors, I mean, even like we didn't even mention <clears throat> Grace was played by Hella uh, Lockhart. Like she was Hella like, Locklear, yeah, Locklear. She was like the smoking the, hot chick of the nineties. Yeah, like she was like the shit in the nineties, man. And and she had a, mm-hmm. a very small part. I mean, she was really only in like four to five scenes, and that was it. Yeah, and they had my man. Who play uh who played guy her father, like we always see him as gangster rope. You know what I'm saying? Yep, like he, he always like the head of the mafia or some shit like that. Yeah, some kind of father. Like he was in um he was the man in uh uh Goodfellas. You know what I'm saying? So it yep. was great to see him in a comedic role because I mean, just mm-hmm. off the top of my head, I don't remember him in any kind of comedic roles. And like just that one part, like he had some, you know, some funny parts, but like the, but the scene that got me was when his wife was like, we got 300 people showing up. He was like, all right, they come in, they show up. And he said, they show up, they eat, they go the fuck home. And it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> so fucking funny. And, and they, had a, like, they had a boy from uh, Five Heartbeats in the two. The boy from where? I mean, not Five Heartbeats. What was that? The Temptations, wasn't it? I forgot yeah. what his name is. I mean, it's like Aaron something. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so like, I- they had a they had a pretty decent cast in there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think everybody had I think everybody did a good job in this man. Um, you know, even even from just small parts, man. As far as like yep. um, the the dude that was the pad the bad cop, 
Like yep. every like they they did they did pretty good with everybody, man. Even 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 his wife, like Elise Neal, Page I Love as well. Yeah, like <clears throat> they did they did pretty good. I mean, I don't know what kind of budget they ended up having for this movie. But it was um, um it was a twenty it, they had twenty five million and they did I think forty six in box office. Okay, yeah, and like you said earlier, like, yeah, it didn't blow up, like, in the theaters, like, it didn't right. make profit, but as far as, like, the way we like to announce it is to say, like, a hood classic, like, it's, 100%. And it's really a hood classic, is more of, 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 a, of a comedy classic that's for yeah. a certain audience, you know what I'm yeah. saying, like, this ain't the audience of, you know, Oscar and, you know, all type of shit like that, mm-hmm. like, this is something like if it had win an award, it'd be some shit like MTV movie award type shit. Like right. this would this would be recognized on smaller levels, but like the impact that it had, because when we was previewing this movie last week, um you had said that he did one classic that got this movie, and then this movie is what started the rush hours. So, because mm-hmm. I think that what this movie did was it showed that, yo, this dude can be the main guy in the movie, in a comedy movie, mm-hmm. and start a franchise like Rush Hour. Now, I don't think that Rush Hour was initially was going to turn into what it turned into. I think that the way that it blew up, because I don't think that they thought that him and Jackie Chan was going to, Kill it to the point where they were gonna end up making four rush hours. But yeah, and then you got you also got to look at it like this: like it's 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 a thing for Chris Tucker. Like regardless if regardless if he's the main character or if he's the supporting character, especially when he's with somebody who's not also a comedian, he makes it very easy for them to also be funny in movies. If you look at like him and Ice Cube, Ice Cube is not a comedian. Ice Cube is a rapper. So for this to be his first leading role, you know what I'm saying? Like he's been in movies before, but for this to be his first leading role, you know what I'm saying? Like major leading role. And then for him to be with Chris Tucker and have those funny moments, you know what I'm saying? Same thing with Charlie Sheen. Like Charlie Sheen is not a comedic actor. And you know what I'm saying? Like we've seen him in like some movies to where he could kind of be funny. Like, um, What's the movie where they was playing for the Indians? Major Major League. Yeah, like Major League. Like he was kind of funny in Major League, but in this one, like he was hilarious. Like he had moments where he was like hilarious. And then, you know what I'm saying? You bring in a guy like Jackie Chan, who anytime we see Jackie Chan, <clears throat> excuse me, it's in an action movie or a kung fu flick. So for him to be able to have Jackie Chan and bring out that funny in Jackie Chan, like that just it's a testament to how good Chris Tucker is, you know what I'm saying, in these comedic roles. And then for him and, you know what I'm saying, for Brett Ratner to be able to see that and be able to use that and create this franchise of, you know what I'm saying, Rush Hour. And they even cast Chris Tucker in Money Talks. Like, to me, it's just, it just goes to show you just the vision of Brett Ratner and just the brilliance of Chris Tucker. Yeah, th- yeah, you, you're so true on that. And for him to, like, when, when you – I mean, look, I'm not an actor. I don't know, but it seems like when you go into a leading role and, like, this is your mm-hmm. first, to capitalize the way that he did yeah. off of his yeah. first leading role, like, I can't really think of anyone who, this is their first shot in a leading role and to crush it the way that he did and for yeah. it to start something, like, whether you a Rush Hour person or not, I mean, they did four of them, so obviously they killed it at the box office. And yep. if he Kill money talks. I don't think rush hour happens. So I agree. So to get that moment and capitalize on it the way that he did, I think he did a phenomenal job, man. Yeah. But don't try to take me off off my game, man. You do the you. It's your turn for the fire flames to go first, man. For sure, for sure, man. So um, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, man, just the the brilliance of Chris Tucker, um, the vision of Brett Ratner, man, um. You know what I'm saying? Charlie Sheen, who, if I want to even say this, I don't think that if 
Charlie Sheen is in this movie, I don't even think Charlie Sheen go, goes on to do Two and a Half Men and be as good as he was in Two and a Half Men because there were um, there were episodes in Two and a Half Men where, remember, Heather Locklear, who he worked with a lot, was also, you know what I'm saying, one of the reoccurring um, characters in that series as well. But I think that this was one of those movies that kind of helped him be that, like, witty, arrogant, you know what I'm saying, like, snobby kind of, you know what I'm saying, character in Two and a Half Men. But, um, you know what I'm saying, back to the movie, the cast, you know what I'm saying, you got people like Faison Love, Elise Neal, you know what I'm saying, uh, Heather Locklear. To have all of this in, you know what I'm saying, like, in this, you know what I'm saying, kind of cake mix, if you want to call it that, and for them to be able to bake it into what it was, even though the critics say that it really wasn't a commercial success, 25 to 46, that's pretty decent. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You didn't double, but I mean, you still, you know what I'm saying? You, you still made a profit off of it. So it's not like, um, you know, it was like a, a major, major movie, but it still holds up in, you know what I'm saying, down the line in 2020. If you watch this now in 2020, you're still going to laugh. If you um if you show this to you know what I'm saying anybody that never seen it when it came out and you show it to a younger crowd, I'm sure that they're still going to laugh at you know what I'm saying scenes in this movie. And there's still some references in this movie that anybody can kind of get. It's not like you know what I'm saying like over your head comedy. So I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five. Three and a half. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I think you made a great point on the, the two and a half men thing. I, I think that that started a whole, I think that Money Talks did start another avenue for yeah. Charlie. So I think that that was a great point. <clears throat> I think it's a great point of you saying that it basically, you said it in another way, but it aged well. Like you mm-hmm. can still watch the movie 15 years from now and it's still going to mm-hmm. be funny. Yep. And so this is one of those type movies that just really, really aged well. And I think that what it did for Chris Tucker, like I was saying earlier, with crushing it for your first time in the leading role and it's starting you a whole nother franchise where you get to the point where you just say, fuck the other franchise because he got so damn mm-hmm. big, he didn't even do Fridays anymore. And um, yeah, so that started a whole nother thing. But um, the point that I was going to make was damn if I could remember that shit that money talks even though like you said because I mean you said a lot of the points that I was going to say it doesn't have the commercial success like it doesn't it, uh-huh. like you said they didn't even double their money but at the end of the day what it did for the actors that are in it it changed that you too and the mm-hmm. point that I'm gonna make it just popped up in my head. the only thing that I had a problem with and I pulled this out of your book actually from last week James Russell ain't got no friends no family like yeah yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. I didn't even I, think about it sudden, he's the best man when you just met him four days ago like you know what I mean and it's like well damn dude yeah. you ain't you ain't, you ain't got no family come to the wedding. Like, we didn't know much about James Russell. All we knew is that he was a reporter that was probably on his way to get fired. He's he's stretching for stories. So that's why he gets this uh this ticket scalpel arrested on some dumb shit. So it's like yeah. so all we know about him is that he wanna be in the big leagues. And he want to prove to his in-laws that he could do this job and he's not just using her for her money. So mm-hmm. it seems he's trying to be a better reporter really to prove something to her parents. And it's like, but it's like, that's all we know about him. So right. that was my criticism, because it's like, we don't know anything about his background and he don't have anybody with them so it's like he he forms this relationship with a dude that he got signed up because it's like he don't have anybody else you know mm-hmm. that would be my only criticism is that they didn't really give us a backstory on him and that he didn't really have anybody to rely on or anything like that but I'm gonna give it man like 
my grading scale on this is going to be more of the comedic relief that you get from it and it aging as well as it did. I'm going to give it a four, man. Uh, nice. we, we ain't too far. We ain't too far from each other, but I'm going to give it a four. And then, like my biggest criticism is the fact of like James Russell ain't got no friends. And it's like, because like throughout the movie, Franklin is the one that's taking him out the place. He took him to see, uh, he took him to see, uh, Damn, what was his cousin that Aaron? You know what I'm saying? Yep. He had um the ticket scalper dude, you know, yep. on this call. Like it, it just got to a point where, and then he was able to call Carmen. And then just a small part that um that I just want to mention about Carmen, like when um when he called, when Franklin called his uh his girl when he was at um the wedding rehearsal, and she was like, what about this Carmen dude that called here and said he owed him $25,000? He was like, I do not owe him no $25,000. He said, I owe him $2,500. He said, no interest, baby. He lying, baby. He lying. <laughs> <laughs> but just little small shit like that. But yeah. like, it just, it just like, there's so many funny parts in this movie, so many rewatchable parts in this movie. So that's why I'm giving it a four, and I'm really only knocking the fact of we don't really know shit about James Russell except the fact mm -hmm. that he's just a not good reporter, and he wants to be a good reporter for his wife and to impress his wife's family because he, I guess, you don't want to be seen as that guy just, you know, marrying her for her riches. So right. I'm gonna give it. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So um. Yeah, man. Um, I, we spoke about it a little bit earlier, you know, saying in the, in the beginning of the pod, man, and uh, we talked about how, you know, saying we're, we're going to start taking a different avenue on some of these episodes, and we're going to start showing some appreciation to, um, you know, what I'm saying Hollywood's, you know, what I'm saying directors and actors, um, possibly even I was kind of thinking maybe, you know, what I'm saying some of the franchises um, that are so beloved by people, you know, what I'm saying. Um, today, so this next episode that we got coming out, um, and I, I think it's gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna be one of the ones where people are going to be doing a lot of reminiscing. Do whole listen, a whole, <laughs> legend, a whole a lot of reminiscing, a whole legend like like he's he's the guy that that oh man, like he to me change film forever like yeah I, that i remember seeing somebody put um like a poll up and they was like they had him and a couple of other actors and they was like one gotta go and all of they um they work and it was just like oh yeah this yeah. is definitely the person i'm not taking away like like this guy like 100 yeah, percent like, dude, you you take him out of history. Like, we don't get ah. See, I can't say it, man, because I want them to know who it is. Yeah, well, but, let me put it like this: it's a lot of iconic roles. It's a lot of iconic roles. Then, not even that. Like, don't forget, like he was a fucking sex symbol at one point in time. Yes, and like I, literally, if I say this, well, I can't say this because there there are a lot of dudes that could fit in this category as far as like like we always say I, I don't care about the Oscars. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oscars none of that shit mean nothing to me. And right. you know what I'm saying? Like this dude only has one Oscar. Well no he has two but yeah he, he got one. he got two. One of them was supporting. Supporting, yeah. And that's still that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people mm -hmm. because like Leo like the awards are, are so fucking bullshit dude. Yeah. It's, it's like, politics, man. It's politics. Yeah. And and I don't see why this dude was, you know, one of the guys that got caught up in this. But, like, he 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 is, like, simply, like, a great. Like, so many iconic roles. He plays so many iconic people. Mm -hmm. And he only has one. I want, now nah, people probably still don't know. He only has one movie. Where he done a sequel because he don't like doing sequels. That's true. And, I just thought about that. That is true, and that's recent. Yeah, very recent. And for him to do that, and 
he he's just a, a smart guy, man. Um, he yeah. he directed some stuff. Um, he, he I think he ended up getting some big award for the one movie that he had directed. What he I know it's two that come to mind, and the first one he did is one of my favorite movies, uh, mm-hmm. which we, we'll get more into it next week. So, um, next episode is gonna be it, it's gonna look, dude. Uh, you're gonna have to like. Put up a finger or something. Tell me to shut the hell up because like it's so much damn shit that I can. Oh no, I'm with you because listen, this is this is how you you said it. You said it earlier, but this is how impactful he is. Without him, the Marvel universe may not even be the same. Just think about that. And he has nothing to do with the Marvel universe, but without him, the Marvel universe just may not be the same. But it it took me a second. Got it now. I got it now. I got it. Listen, yeah. that's how yeah. that's just another testament to how great he is. Not even that, not even that. Dude got lineage in this joint. And the lineage is, is doing their thing too. So yeah. Yeah. next episode, man, y'all stay tuned, man. Listen, I'm telling you, we we got one, man. We we got one for the ages. This one is is well deserved and and it should, you know what I'm saying, it should be something that if you are um, a film podcast, if you are a television podcast, you should definitely think about doing some appreciation episodes, especially for actors, producers, you know what I'm saying, franchises, television shows, whatever. I think that we got to start giving these guys, their, and women as well, but we got to start giving these people in this industry their flowers because they do a lot of, um, they do a lot for the not just the, the, the country, not just for the people who watch them, but for the people, you know what I'm saying, who come after them. And especially the one that we're we going to do this next episode. He is, uh, he's that guy. Yes, God sir. damn, man. He's just that guy. I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to put it. He's the man. Yes, sir, man. And, and, and speaking of appreciation, man, like, you know, people, please go out and support the Stolen Time podcast. The last episode I did is called Appreciation. And mm-hmm. I was mainly showing appreciation to who I feel is, I mean, male or female, one of the best rappers in the game. And like, I I, I did a segment on Rhapsody, man. She finally got a award. It's crazy for her to be rapping. Yes, right. congratulations to Rhapsody, man. Because listen, for for her to get lyricist of the year, that's Dude. that's volumes. Yes, at the BET that's Awards. Volumes. In a, in a yeah in a B, at the BET Awards but not at the BET Hip Hop Awards but not only that this was a mixed category this wasn't this wasn't like all females or all males no this was a mixed category so this is this is this is her just do I think this is this is uh, 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 the first of many and it should be the first of many because to me Rhapsody is one of those artists that I don't care who you are like if you are if you are in the rap and you are one of those dudes who are strictly lyricists. And I mean, strictly into lyricists, you don't compare her to, you don't put her in no gender category. You compare her to lyricists, plain and simple. She's that good. Yeah. She's just that good. That good. So yeah, I did an episode on that, man. Um, I did a segment on her. So go check out the Stolen Time Podcast, man. Um, You can get the links and everything from the Stolen Time Podcast page. Also the Stolen Mm -hmm. Time Podcast. On Instagram, S. Foster Eight on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, also, go check out the Twenty Eight Minutes or Less. Um, so coming out tomorrow morning. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, that was one of my rant episodes. So uh, stay stay tuned to Twenty Eight Minutes or Less. Me and you got some stuff cooked up for a future episode for Twenty Eight Minutes or Less that we're gonna do. So uh, yep. be on the that and um, shit. I think that's. Yeah, that's all. That's all I got to plug, man. That's what's up, bro. Um, you guys can find me at Scoots Bronson on Twitter. You can also find me at Scoots Bronson underscore TV on Instagram. You can check uh, me out at Scoots Bronson TV on YouTube. Um, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you check out Fifteen Minutes of Fame. Um, I'm about to, you know, what I'm saying, get into some stuff. I'm, I'm finishing up these topics that I got because I want to, you know, what I'm saying, have a good conversation with my guy as that on this one. So, um, you know what I'm saying? You guys just keep the, you know, your eyes open. Make sure you subscribe to 15 Minutes of Fame. Um, make sure you subscribe to this podcast as well. 
and um, I had some issues going on. I, I had got everything settled. So this week, man, Thursday night, get ready. Isolated Society will be right back up. Spreaker.com slash Isolated Society, man. Tune in and listen. And if you want to, uh, if you do want to listen and you can't listen live, and you can't chat with me and, and get into the good stuff, it's okay because um, the replay will be up uh, the following day on all podcast platforms. So check out Isolated Society, man. Sports, sports, and sports. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm giving you my raw, raw view of sports. I'll give you some hot takes, a lot of different hot takes, uh, um, a lot of opinion. It's not a lot that's going to be fact-based, but um, we're going to have some fun with it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to hear me say some stuff that's going to make you say, man, what the hell is he talking about? And um, shit, you can react to it, which is a beautiful thing. And eventually, uh, we're going to be having people call in and, you know, I'm going to get my Paul fine bomb on. So, you know what I'm saying? Stay tuned, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, and uh, yeah, and that, and that, what? And that uh, VA podcast group, oh, well, yeah, VA podcast watch group page on Facebook as yeah. well. Yep, make sure you know what I'm saying you guys like the page. Um, if you guys are interested in getting into the group, man, just send the invite and then um, we'll add you guys in, and uh, you know what I'm saying that way you can stay updated with everything we got going on. Um, sooner or later, once we get up to at least 100 people in the group, we'll start doing watch parties. So you guys will be able to watch the movie um, that we got coming up on one of the future episodes. And then, uh, you know what I'm saying, you'll be able to talk shit with us throughout the movie, man. You know what I'm saying? See what, see what we got to say about the movie before we give it our real breakdown. So, you know what I'm saying? I think that's something that's going to be super dope. Yes, sir. Yeah, buddy, man. And with that said, man, thank you guys again for tuning in. We appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you share this with a friend. Um, tell everybody, if you are on Apple Podcasts, man, make sure you leave us a rating. We would greatly appreciate it. Um, you know what I'm saying? If you if you guys have any um, requests or anything like that, make sure you leave it in the co- – or not the comment section, but when you leave your rating, make sure you, uh, you know what I'm saying, request whatever it is that you want us to do. Uh, we'll be giving, you know what I'm saying, all kind of the – We'll be reading all the ratings and then we'll be checking out all the requests as well. And, um, you know what I'm saying? Who knows, man? Your movie might pop up very soon. So, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you show some love. We'll be showing you guys that love in return. And um, like they say in Hollywood, man, it's a wrap. Good.